Hello everyone and welcome to the Link Podcast with me Elle. Today I'll be joined by the amazing Katja who runs the website and YouTube channel Deutsch für euch. Please excuse my German pronunciation there. It's a fantastic resource for anyone learning German or interested in starting to learn German. Before we get into it, let me remind you that all episodes of this podcast are available as link lessons, so you can listen and go through the transcript, translating words and phrases that you don't know. The course is called English Link Podcast 2.0 and the lesson link will always be in the description, so go check it out. Link allows you to learn from content you love, podcasts, Netflix shows, movies, YouTube videos, blog posts, news articles, music lyrics, whatever you're into. You can create a lesson with it on Link and have fun on your language learning journey. So Katja runs this wonderful resource for German learners and you may also recognize her as the host of the German Link podcast podcast. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Katya, thank you so much for joining me today. How are you? Of course. I'm good. Thank you for having me. I'm uh, I, I I am sweaty, but I think that's just we're going to have to suffer through that together now. Yeah, yeah, we were talking. We're both in heat waves. So in Germany, how's it looking like today? What's the high, for example? Let me check. Because I am in the south, so of course of course, I get it worse than other people, even even still. Uh, yeah, well, it's saying that it's 27 Celsius right now, but the humidity is hot. constantly at 60%. It's, it's, it's tropical. I didn't ask for this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't sign up for this. Exactly. The humidity is what gets you, you know, you're just like, dripping yes. in sweat as you I walk don't out mind the door. heat or cold it's all good but the humidity no yeah I have to agree but besides yeah. that I'm good We're in... <laughs> and I'm glad to be here good excellent <laughs> good good <laughs> We're going to hit, my watch tells me we're going to hit 34 degrees today in Vancouver, Canada, which is not normal for us. Uh, it's the hottest day of this heat wave, so I'm just in my cave here. Yeah. All the lights off, fans, but which we've turned off for recording. So yes, we're going to look dewy, <laughs> so it's all good. <laughs> so Katya, your channel, uh, Deutsch für euch, <laughs> Uh, was founded uh, almost 10 years ago now and it's a wonderful resource for I guess mostly uh, English native speakers who would like to learn German and learn about German culture so tell us what made you start the channel right um, yeah I know you got that exactly right I would I would correct it is to say anyone who speaks English well of course can mm. can use the videos but Right, right. I did uh, start it and I do make a lot of videos still with um, native speakers in particular in mind because I use a lot of, and this is partly because of me just, you know, English is the language I speak best besides German. And I right. think a lot in English and I think a lot about how they're comparable or different. And uh, the challenges that especially English speakers are going to face. Now that I'm also fluent in Russian, the same things happen to me with Russian. But at the time, you know, my knowledge about other languages really wasn't good enough to do that. So that was one thing. Mm -hmm. And then what I always say is the reasons, like the collection of reasons for why I started the channel was basically, uh, I really, really love languages. I've always had a knack for languages. Um, so that was one. I, I knew that that topic interested me. I like explaining things to people. I mm -hmm. like teaching. It's also what I've chosen as my field of study. <laughs> and I, uh, I, yeah, that might f seem like a superficial reason in that row of things, but I also really always wanted to be a YouTuber, not even just a content creator, but mostly a YouTuber because I started exploring YouTube even with a signed up account in like 20, no, in 2006. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like really, really early. And I always wanted to do mm -hmm. something and I never had yeah. a topic and I never had the stamina to stick with anything for like longer than a month. 
And uh, then with Deutsche Reich, it worked because I really enjoy it. Excellent. Wow. And let me just backtrack to what you said that you're also, so you're fluent in English, obviously. <laughs> and you're also fluent in Russian now. Amazing. Yes. Wow. Not to the degree. And how long? Yeah, not to the degree, as in, in, in German or English. I even have days where, like, my English is better than my German now, which is really weird. Um, but wow. <laughs> <laughs> it feels that way anyway, when... let's say that. And I'm right, definitely right. not there with Russian. But, yeah. Mm-hmm. When did you start learning English? Uh, pretty standardly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, in school, I started... Um, well, now kids in Germany are learning English from, I think, grade one. There it's going to be very, like, playful and stuff. But still, it's been integrated into elementary mm-hmm. schools. When I was in elementary, that wasn't a thing yet. Um, I remember we were taught, like, one or th- one to three words a year, and half of those were wrong. So I remember oh, being well, taught that good. you're welcome <laughs> is please. Because in German, we say bitte, please. Danke, thank you, bitte, you're welcome. And so the teacher just translated that literally, please, thank you, please. Um, So that was the level. I did have like an introductory English course in like third grade by a voluntary, you know, she wasn't a teacher, but she was a native speaker. Um, And then Mm -hmm. I started learning in fifth grade. But the main like chunk of English that I learned started around the time that I was you know, started to explore the internet because, yeah, this must have been like 20, I keep saying 20 because we're in the 20s now, 2005-ish, 567, around that that time. And I just spent a lot of time online and exploring. And to be fair, there was definitely more German content even back then than there was in, I don't know, Arabic or many other languages. But still, it was very limited, right? So you you could explore the German internet relatively quickly. And so if, yeah, and then stuff like YouTube started happening and there you had people posting vlogs and that was mostly people doing it in English, especially, of course, the, the visible ones. So everywhere I went online, and that's where I started spending a lot of my time, there was English. So I didn't really have a choice. <laughs> that was one thing. <laughs> and then the other thing was I really started getting into anime in my early teens and there same thing if you wanted to find subtitles which were usually done by fans who like took the shows from tv and then put subtitles and put them online um that would be subtitles in english so i would sit there and watch my anime and like every three sentences there would be a word that i didn't know and i'd look it up so that's how i learned a lot of vocabulary so most of my english is definitely uh internet grown combined with Mm-hmm. you know movies and stuff of course but it's mostly the internet right. and a decent chunk of it is actually stand-up comedy <laughs> oh nice i love it okay <laughs> who do you who do you like what comedians are you into? well the uk is a huge scene right and then scene. there's also a yeah. lot of american comedians so mm-hmm. um i'm a bit embarrassed to say that i think the first stand-up comic i ever like really watched a lot of was Dane Cook. I don't know who that that's is. that's totally fine. <laughs> <laughs> Dan Cook? Dane. Dane. Dan Cook? Dane. Oh, but Dane. I think his okay. name is Daniel, but he just called himself Dane. Oh, okay. Um he was a really big thing for a while in the mid two thousands. And okay. it's not that he was like hugely offensive or whatever, but it's like I can see why I thought it was funny at fourteen and I can see why I no longer find it funny now. Uh, you know, okay, that kind yes. of thing. Right. Um, yeah. Someone I discovered back then as well, and still really love, is actually Christopher Titus. American comedian. Yeah. Not everyone's style, probably, but yeah. One of my favorites. As for Brits, Eddie Izzard. Um, yes, I love Eddie Izzard. <laughs> with, like, Michael McIntyre. I don't know if he's done anything recently, but I always circle back to Russell Howard. Um, I don't know him. You don't? No, I know I'm, I should be writing a list. I'm gonna get these names. Some of the names I don't know. Because I thought I thought this <laughs> one, yeah, like that's the name she's gonna know for sure. Because I don't know how oh, much stand-up comedy you Russell enjoy. Howard. 
Um, I, I mean, I dabble, but uh, <laughs> yeah, Russell Howard. You know, maybe because he has I like a, him, a weekly review would... show, so I thought he must probably be like a name you come across oh. every now and then. Ooh, you know, I've been out of the UK for such a long That's time. That's fair. Maybe I just <laughs> missed it, you know. <laughs> oh, and Sarah Milliken. Okay. I also enjoy every now. She bri- she's Br- she's British. She's oh. Geordie, as far oh, okay. as I'm aware. Oh, okay. That <laughs> accent. Okay. And there's yeah, and then there was that big Daniel Sloss moment a few years ago that I really got into and like there's a lot there's just there's a lot there's a few people that I discover and then I don't remember them and then there's some people I follow for a while but um Mm -hmm. yeah I just really enjoy comedy as like (laughs) this is gonna sound so like comedy podcast but it's as as an art or rather as a craft I like well-constructed jokes a lot so yeah (laughs) and it is a craft right like to be funny is is no easy thing and like you say yeah to craft a a joke something that is exactly truly funny and clever or you know there's a nuendo yeah it's like it's 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 very and it's so language involved maybe to like circle back to Mm -hmm. that topic and I think it's no accident that I'm into it so much because if I, for example, I'm never going to get into a comic who doesn't, to some degree, at least play with language. And you will also mm-hmm. find me laughing at moments that are mostly just like, not even wordplay, but like using, for example, an overly technical or an overly high register word in a weird context or stuff like that. Because I just enjoy when people mm-hmm. have fun with language. And that's a huge part of good comedy because that is your medium, right? So you should know right. how to use it well. And not just mm-hmm. yell. Mm-hmm. <laughs> not just yell or just be offensive. Exactly. Yeah, sure. So to circle back to the language thing um, and your channel, which helps people learn German, what would you hope say so. are so <laughs> some of the, uh, the common issues that people who are learning German run into? Ha! Huh. <laughs> so... Yeah, are there just so many? or <laughs> Well... To get like, to get like teachery for a second, of course the the issues are going to differ depending on like your background, what's your native language, how yeah. many languages do you speak, etc. But let's assume we're speaking mostly from an English speaker per- perspective. Um, mm-hmm. So pronunciation is definitely one thing, because we do have a lot of sounds that English doesn't have. We have the reverse thing with like Germans struggling with the th or the exact pronunciation of the English wrote. Uh, um, rotic uh, r stuff like that in german it's going to be the ch sounds so the he and the h mm. right the 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 cat hiss <laughs> so there wait there are two the ch makes two different yes. sounds yes depending on ah, okay. I didn't know depending that. on the vowel that they fo- follow they're going to make different sounds okay so if it's after an a and okay. o uh, u yeah that's it it's okay. like in okay. Buch, which means book. Okay. But if it's after I, E, or I think all of the diphthongs, I don't think I'm forgetting one. It's going to be a sh, like in oish. 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 Or ish. Okay. I, ish. Ah, uh, okay. So, so those are two. And there's a bunch of different, you know, other sounds, of course. I think that's part of any language, though. I don't think, you know, there's always going to be challenging sounds depending on where you're coming from. Um, from my experience, besides the obvious, in case, you know, for people who aren't filled in, we have three genders in German who therefore have, you know, words have three different genders, therefore different articles and different pronouns. Mm-hmm. And that can make it tricky because we also assign those genders, grammatical genders, randomly. A table is male. You go ahead and figure out why, but that's how it is. Um <laughs> There's some things where it makes sense or you, where you can like, mm-hmm. where it might be easier to remember. Let's say that. Um, right, but right. a lot of things, just generally things, objects in the world are going to be male, female or neutral. Basically okay. randomly, mostly dependent on how, what endings they have and not even that always. <laughs> and then there's syntax, I'd say, is another big topic. Okay. Yeah. And so, Katya, where would you suggest to anyone listening who is interested in starting to learn German or is a beginner and is looking for some kind of, you know, 
uh, help, direction, Mm -hmm. (laughs) where do you suggest people start? (laughs) This is going to sound like maybe a bit of a dissatisfying answer, but there is no definite, and I'm sure you know this as well, uh, as as a language, uh, language, what do you call it? Involved? (laughs) A person, yeah, a person like who that. deals with a language involved person. I love it. A member of the language learning community. Yes, let's say that. Let's say that everyone's part of all the communities now. Exactly. If you're yeah. in the language learning bubble, uh, to make it even more mm-hmm. content based, you know this already. But basically, there is no one size fits all. And if anyone ever tries to tell you there is a one size fits all, they're lying to you. Um, Mm -hmm. because, and I just actually talked about this. I don't know when this is going to be out and when that episode is going to be out, but in episode seven of the German podcast, I actually just talked about this to my friend Maria, that basically it's not about finding like the five hacks. That's four, Mm -hmm. five, the five hacks that like will unlock learning languages for you. Um, no matter what any YouTube title will tell you, um, it's much more about attitude and what goes into that is motivation. So basically start where it's fun for you. If you're starting off learning German and this is not at all a hit on like anyone who like needs to learn German because they want to move to Germany or whatever. Um, Although I would question if you have not at all had any touch or interest in the language, maybe move to a country where you're actually interested in the language enough to like, because it's just going to make your life harder. Um, But find, especially in the beginning, the world is your oyster, like pick whatever makes the language fun for you, whether that be watching movies, listening to Rammstein or some other band, um, or watching a certain person on YouTube. Like I said, like a lot of, or comedy, (laughs) right? Um, a lot of my English was basically just, this is the barrier I need to get past so I can enjoy the stuff that I want to enjoy. So I can get access to the stuff that I want to watch, that I want to read, if I want to communicate. So for example, if you enjoy just chatting with people, you can also find chat rooms if there still is such a thing. I think there is. Um, (laughs) or, uh, listening to podcasts, listening to books. Uh, reading books even. Um, So basically, if you're starting out, that's the easiest part because you get to pick whatever the hell you think is fun. If you're like me and you also just enjoy exploring basic grammar for a language, go do that. Like whatever gets you going. That's going to be different for everyone, I think. Um, Mm -hmm. With... Were you looking for... Were you looking in that answer for like a particular... like? spot in German grammar that you should start with? <laughs> no, I think this is the perfect answer, actually. Yes. Or even maybe then for the people who, because it's so, it's so true, right? It all comes down to why you want to learn the language. Make yourself want to. Otherwise, you won't, yep. you know, mo- motivation, you know. So, Katia, what do you have in store? What's, uh, what's coming up in the future for you, your website, your channel? What's going on? Right. Um, so like I said, I uh, went to uni to be a teacher and that took a while and then COVID hit and everything got slowed down a bit. But I am finally hoping to now start my like in school training uh, within the next half year, which means I'm then going to be oh. finally a certified school teacher in Germany. So that's something that's happening. I'm also currently working on being able to teach drama as well. So that's the personal front. Oh. Channel wise... Okay. I don't really have a lot like specific stuff set up right now. There is a project with a friend that's like kind of waiting in the, what do you call it? Waiting in the wings. Yes. Um, (laughs) But I'm not going to say anything about that yet because it's really baby, baby shoes. So. (laughs) (laughs) I like that. Baby shoes. Um, On my channel right now, and this is a pretty like, I already, I'm already doing this, but I started this pretty recently. I'm currently enjoying streaming. Um, because it gives me, you know, there's a lot more room to, um, interact with people, obviously also kind of change the course of where I was going with the channel. If I see that people want to talk about something particular and then I just can go back and see, okay, this was interesting to people. I'm going to cut this out, make it a video. So yeah, that's what we're doing on DFA right now. So if you want to, want to learn German, I do uh, most of those streams in English. So if you, uh, have a burning question about. (laughs) about German 
catch yeah. one of my streams and uh, you might find an answer. <laughs> Excellent. Sounds good. And what age will you teach when you are qualified? Does it work like that? I assume. Yes. High school. Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, so here, since we have, ugh, so since we have, uh, the, <laughs> the answer isn't quite that simple because we don't have the Anglo-American oh, okay. system of like just it's K through 12, basically. Um, but we okay. do have a three to two um, branches that you go into after elementary. And I'm basically going to teach the, um, the like, highest achieving branch of that which is the sort of school that leads up to the abitur which is what enables you to go to university in Germany so I'm going to be teaching fifth through 12th or depending on the school I'm at 13th because we're fancy and some of the schools still have 13 classes (laughs) (laughs) wow (laughs) excellent well like best of luck with that Um, thank you it must be so nice to be you know nearing the end of such a huge huge thing you know being qualified it's 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 huge um yeah best of luck with that and i will pop of course uh the link to your channel and website and all the other stuff instagram and everywhere everywhere you are in the description so uh anyone listening watching definitely go check out catch's stuff (laughs) Oh, um, thank you. Ooh, I forgot yes. to mention my it? teacher. <laughs> Sorry, I'm being very unprofessional. Oh, yeah. But if you if no, you no, too love German <laughs> and you love a German heart, this is also available on my website. <laughs> I, I made merch that. last okay. year, so buy it. Amazing. <laughs> Why not? I'll put the link in to the thank description you. <laughs> to, for that too. <laughs> well, listen, Katya, stay cool. <laughs> heat wise and otherwise otherwise (laughs) and thank you so so much for coming on thank you so much for having me this was this was a blast and it went by by very fast so yeah i feel like we've been talking for like three minutes yeah yeah (laughs) thank you katya bye